just got completely fucked by this pothole again. It's so crazy. Yo, JD here. And as you can see, we are back on F1 23 as always. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at the equal cars once again. Because there's actually been quite a few people who've approached me, including some very, very competitive drivers, who have said that since this new patch, which was solely designed to fix the equal car problem we had in the previous one, 1.12 patch, where the equal cars were basically turned to realistic, apparently Codemasters have said that it is now back to normal and everything is absolutely fine. But there have been many, many drivers who have complained, and as I said, messaged me privately to say that there actually are still quite some considerable differences between them. And it isn't so much the top speed, the grip, or anything like that, but it's the way the cars are reacting over the curbs. And just as a bit of a disclaimer, I think the equal cars have never really been equal in my experience of playing the F1 games since 2010. I think they've always been based off one particular model. On this game, Dan Hawkins, the esports coordinator, has said that it's based off the Red Bull. Basically, every single car on equal cars is the Red Bull with just a different livery. But the problem is, and I think one of the main reasons why there are slightly different handling and different physics between the cars is mainly due to the wheelbase. The cars are not all the same length, they are not all the same width, and despite the code being exactly the same, apparently there are going to be some differences between the cars. So that's exactly what we are doing in today's video, and you will be seeing on the screen as we uh, go through this. And more notably, many people said that the McLaren seems to be the easiest car over the curbs, because that is what the issue is right now according to many drivers, is that the cars are reacting very differently over the bumps and curbs and seemingly it's been much easier to drive. And although maybe at a lower level in league racing, this probably won't be so much of an issue, but obviously when it comes to F1 esports, we have seen the minuscule of caps between the drivers from first to last, sometimes is covering sometimes even less than a tenth of a second. That's how close it actually is. To have a car that is going to react differently over the curbs, potentially get even half a tenth more of lap time out of it, it is actually quite catastrophic. And with over $1 million on the line, you can't have an ounce of difference between the cars. So the McLaren has been suggested that it is the easiest over the curbs. And we tried that at Abu Dhabi because I also noticed myself when watching PSGL, there were some drivers who were using quite a lot of the curb others who were completely avoiding it. So that did actually catch my attention. And that was before anyone actually approached me. So the McLaren, when I was driving it, seemed to be pretty good um, over the curbs. But I tried the Williams first because this is the car many people have reported to be the most problematic over these curves, specifically at the end of the main straight in Abu Dhabi, also going through the double long right-hander, also going through the last corner there are quite a few nasty bumps. It's quite a bumpy circuit in general, but this is where people have said there are quite big differences between the cars. So when I was driving the Williams, it was manageable to go around the corner, and I'll be giving my conclusion at the end of this video. But when I was doing this test, the Williams definitely seemed to have a lot more of an intense reaction to the curve. So the number of bumps didn't change, but the bumps themselves, I'm using exactly the same setup in both of these tests, exactly equal cars as well, exactly the same force feedback settings, nothing has changed whatsoever. And I did notice in the Williams that it was bottoming out much, much more, and I found it quite hard to be consistent. And again, I want many of you guys to actually go away and test this, put your results in the comments down below, because don't take my word for it, I don't know if this is true, don't know if this is placebo or anything of that at all. Please let me know what your findings are. Have you actually found a difference between the cars, specifically on how it's reacting over the curves? Which car do you find the most comfortable? And which car do you find the most difficult to control? And as you can see in these clips here, the Williams, 
was I just found it quite easy to bottom out over the curbs and going through the double right hander it was very very intense there's quite a nasty bump before you go into the final right before you go into the hotel section that was always very very paramount and very intense every time I went over it and same for the last corner as well it was quite easy to, for the car to bottom out and my lap times weren't too different it was about a tenth difference I could get pretty much within a tenth of what I did with the McLaren but I just found it personally a lot harder to get on the pace with the Williams and it took me a lot longer to actually get quite a good lap time with it so when we actually switched to the McLaren the bumps were still there so it wasn't like there were, were no bumps being existed between the cars but it just felt like it was half as much force as it was with the Williams and certainly didn't bottom out still could lose the car at times if you snatched the brakes or you were on that 100% brake for a little bit too long you could still lose the car and you definitely still feel the bumps there wasn't any fewer or more bumps between the cars or one or the other but it definitely definitely felt quite noticeable to me that it was a lot less intense with the McLaren it just seems to absorb the bumps much more smoothly and if you're running quite a high force feedback which really is something you want you want to be able to feel connected to the car as much as you possibly can this actually could make a difference in terms of your performance and I felt like with the McLaren I was definitely being a lot more consistent felt a lot easier to drive and you'll see from the clips you'll see on the screen here now it was just much easier to get on the pace and the top speed wasn't really so different um, anything at all I think you can definitely still achieve the same lap times but it just felt like a much much smoother experience with the McLaren and I was definitely a lot more consistent a bit. I was definitely making a lot more mistakes with the Williams bottoming out spinning quite a bit as well whereas in the McLaren it just felt like the bumps were still the same but the force feedback when I was going over the bumps was 50% than what it was in the Williams and it could be quite an easy solution to this you can simply just turn down the off-track effects in your settings that's something that could help you and potentially all the rumble strip settings something like that so I think there are ways around it but yeah the McLaren even if you couldn't see what car it was it just was a lot lot smoother it just wasn't as intense it wasn't as aggressive and wasn't so vicious over the bumps because around Abu Dhabi there are some pretty nasty ones where where you hit it you don't know if you can see from the footage if we do a little bit of a side by side if I put that on the screen it might not really be noticeable when you're watching the video but I suggest you actually go away and try this so try exactly the same setup with a McLaren around Abu Dhabi maybe even the one that I've done so if you've gone the leaderboards or I think it was Lucas Blakely's setup so if you just download his setup and just try it between the McLaren and Williams and just let me know what you find because for me the Williams definitely felt to not be as smooth over the bumps and it was just a lot more aggressive so much to the point where sometimes I think it really can affect your driving you can actually want to snap the wheel um, out of your hands if you're not careful so you really have to hang on tight and yeah I think there's just a lot more room for error with the Williams and again reason why I'm raising this is because F1 Esports which is scheduled to be in a month's time will be using equal cars will be on a LAN and the difference is so small between the drivers I don't think we should be really facing these issues if there is such thing as it being unequal between the cars but again this could all be be placebo don't take my word for it whatsoever I think it will take a lot of people to go out and actually test this specifically esport drivers but please let me know what your findings are so please go into the time trial Grand Prix mode try it between these two cars or try it between all the cars if you want if you want to get a real thorough test for me personally I didn't really find a difference in the amount of bumps that I was facing but just the intensity of the bumps with the same full sweepback settings with the same setup definitely felt quite notable for me and I think if you feel a lot more confident in the car and you could be a lot more consistent then it's not always the fastest driver that wins it's actually the most consistent driver that wins most of the time thank you so much for supporting the videos and i'll be catching you very very soon
Peace.